The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we have an announcement to make. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Bill Meridian on at the beginning of the hour. And then on Friday uh, we are going to have uh, Shane Smolian. He'll be on. The Wolf Trader will be on. So that will be uh, really be good to, to have him on. Excuse me, let's make that. Uh, yeah, Friday will be, um, uh, will be uh, Bill um Shane, uh, tomorrow will be uh, Bill Meridian. Okay, I, I posted a chart of the German DAX, and as you can see, uh, it had a, a little bit of a sell-off like everything else. And then if we take a look at the uh, market uh, for the uh, FTSE, you'll see it also had a sell-off. Of course, it, these do not show the, uh, the big moves here for uh that we have going so that's the that's the main thing uh that we're looking at in other words i'm saying we had this big rally last night in the market uh, pretty much as expected and uh we'll see you know what it really does it, it, yeah, with the FOMC coming, it'd be good to have Shane on because he follows the Fed like uh, Moses follows the Bible. Uh, that's for sure. We've had a, a pretty good rally here in the uh, in the stocks. We've rallied quite a bit. Now, I wanted to bring to you some information, folks, that we get from uh, over in in, uh, in Hong Kong. I want to show you what they're doing because there there are no masks over there. Look, look what they're doing as far as using masks out. Look at this, folks. You see how they take a, a, a bottle, a water bottle, and turn it into a mask? And then he's got his mask on the inside of that for protection. This is really uh, quite amazing here. Now, let's take a look at the next one. This is what, this is what the terminal looks like. And frankly, there's basically uh, nobody there uh, in the terminal. <laughs> it's usually you can't even walk. You couldn't fall down in this terminal. That's how uh, crazy it is. And you can see the people there also are wearing these bottles because they're really difficult. Uh, let's see, uh, these are these are from people from Hong Kong. Excuse me, from China uh, that did that, not the people from Hong Kong. So, uh, and then the last one I wanted to show you is a. Uh, this is really the to me this is the most amazing one because I've written this uh, many many times but I wanted to show you this is the uh, the the train here uh, you'll be able to, you won't believe this uh, th this train this train you, you couldn't get a seat on this train at midnight and and look at it now there's one person on it so it's it's really uh, crazy now the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is you know we've got a lot of news coming out here about how bad it is and the market rallies 200 and some points I realize it was down 450 and it's come back. 150. So the, the the news may be dribbling in, but if you remember, if you remember in Hong Kong in August, the market was bottoming in August, and that's when the when all these protesters start coming in, and the market rallied all the way up to the 78 percent level. So you got to follow what the charts are telling you, folks, because if you don't, you know, you don't really have any. Uh, uh, advantage because you don't know about this. There's so much junk out there in the news that it's just absolutely, uh, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing the stuff that is out there. It's, uh, I, I don't know what's happening, but uh, they should do like Singapore. Singapore, if you if you pu publish fake news, I think you get 10 years in prison. So that's a pretty good idea to see whether you know that happens or not. So anyway, uh, we had a request from our good friend uh, David White about to take a look at the TLT. This is a, uh, you'll be able to see here, this is a equivalent to the Treasury note rally. Uh, we're right up at the 61% retracement, as you can see. Uh, we gapped up there. There's gaps all over this because it's an ETF. We don't get that into bonds. Uh, now, the bonds hit that number last night, and they backed off a full point. That was one of the reasons for the strong rally <clears throat> that we've had in the stocks. So that's another thing that we want to, uh, you know, keep uh, close close uh, attention to because uh, it's really related to some of this. Uh, one other thing I wanted to rem to re remind you about, and that is, someone brought it to my attention yesterday, is that 
in Jeffrey Lissamore's book, uh, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, uh, he talked about the earthquake in San Francisco in 1906, the fact that the market didn't do anything for three weeks. It just kept rallying and rallying, rallying, because the reports wouldn't be coming in. They didn't have instantaneous reports. Believe it or not, folks, there was no CNN in 1906. I don't even think there were many radios. Anyway, um, so you gotta, you've got to react to what you're seeing on the charts because people, if there's more buying, prices are going up. If there's more selling, prices are going down. That's it. Now, we have one slam dunk today, folks. That's the earnings for Apple. If Apple doesn't rally after these earnings today, whatever they are, and they're always good, you know, then something's really wrong with the market. So keep an eye on Apple because everybody uh, is expecting it. I was checking the, the tube this morning, and it's just a matter of how much it's going to be up, not if. So uh, the other problem that Apple is mentioning, though, is because of the problem that they're having in China which is a big supply chain uh, for the iPhones, uh, they're having a hard time because they're cutting back. Uh, all the McDonald's and all the, the Starbucks are closed in uh, China from what we've heard, even if that is correct or not. But, uh, you know, we'll be able to see this. Uh, so we'll live through this just like we did through the SARS thing. And uh, we'll see what uh, happens with it uh, from that level. But it is a very serious thing, I would assume, given the fact that uh, everybody is uh, talking about it. But here again, I'm a little bit skeptical of just about everything that's out there, not just a few things, but just about uh, just about everything. Now, we had a request here to talk a little bit about the open interest, uh, how I look at the open interest. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post the chart right off of the CME website. You just have to go to CME. -E .com. That's Chicago Mercantile Exchange.com. And then you click on where it says daily equity volume and open interest. You'll notice it's there. And then I, I've highlighted the equities. And you see the little red arrow there. And then you just go down. And I didn't go down through all of them. I just stopped uh, the first one I saw. Here's the Russell E-mini. That's the most uh, second most popular after the Dow, after the E-mini S&P, then the NASDAQ, and then the Dow Jones. You'll notice that the total open interest for Globex was 192,000. The total volume, 192,987. The total open interest is 505, okay? 505,000. The open interest on the S&P has been running around 3 million, but we've dropped some, so it's down about 2.7 million. So you can see how much bigger it is. And you notice that the open interest on that day dropped. So that tells you that there's players leaving the game, not coming into the game. So that's how you do it. You can check it with the uh, agricultural. You can check it with energies. You can check it with foreign exchange, which I don't recommend because that's such a small part of the market. It's less than 1%. I'll say 2%, 1%. And uh, that's it. Then you have the interest rates where you can check treasury notes, treasury bonds, and gold, silver, uh, platinum, palladium, all those are, are listed there also. So that's easy enough to do. It doesn't take very long to do it. I check it whenever we have records uh, being broken, and that's what I'm looking to do is when I see these records being broken, then I know that that's what, uh, that's what I'm looking at if I see something, uh, see if I see something like that. So that's pretty much, you know, what we're, uh, what we're watching. So, okay, let's move on here to the next one that I want to do here. And uh, let me see. I think, you know, eight. We'll be right back. 877-927-6608. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart from David White uh, that he has a service for uh, Tom's charts that uh, David works on, puts out the patterns. You can see the TLT chart. Uh, so I thought I would bring up the uh, Treasury bonds because uh, they're at such a critical level, and we've had a big move off of them already this morning. If we take a look here uh, at the uh, – this is the 30-year uh, Treasury bond, the March contract. Uh, we made the 61 percent retracement of the high that we made back in September. If you remember back then, that's when the open interest was dropping every day. We were reporting that. That meant that there was short covering. And you can see the market did have a, a pretty strong correction from that level. Now, it's very important to realize, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, just between May and June, you're going to see a little symbol that says 0.40. That means that's very close to 0.382. This this goes out to the third decimal point, so it's very accurate. Uh, Ensign built this, but that's basically a 382 retracement. That's why it was so bullish down there at 155. And now we've rallied six handles, and we went up to the 61% retracement. And last night, we backed off a whole a whole handle. We went from uh, 62 uh, 26 down to 61 um, 26. So uh, that you know, it's just a normal stuff during the night with the market rallying really strongly. So you just have to uh, sort of pay attention to that because it's very very important. Now, if we go screaming up today, uh, that's going to tell us that this thing is going to go higher and higher, and maybe we'll even go up and make a new high. But remember, the weekly high on these bonds is 177. That was made a year and a half ago. So that's the whole thing. Now, I happened to watch Stanley Druckermiller last night. He was one of old George Soros's boys, along with Jimmy Rogers, and uh, he talked about the markets, and he talked about negative interest rates, that he didn't think that was uh, good for the markets. He said he was very nervous, but given the fact that the Fed was in there pumping everything except uh, 
lemonade. He said he didn't think the markets would sell off uh, very much at all. And he's been pretty right all along the way. So be ready. Get my life jacket ready. I will definitely, definitely take a ride in one of your yachts, yachts Tommy, if uh, if you uh, if they get up there. Not a problem. It'll probably be in a it'll probably be in a plastic urn, but I'll still be out there in the boat with you. <laughs> anyway, I still remember that night when we were down there going to dinner and those waves splashing over the thing with the oh my gosh seven eight foot waves on the inland side oh my gosh it was uh, it was terrible let's go back to talk about the news just a little bit folks i posted this yesterday uh this is from uh, our good friend tom hugard and if you take a look here, you'll be able to see here that this is uh, how the markets reacted during these pandemic and epidemics that we've had across the last uh, 50 years. And, the, you know, really the markets just do their own thing and they literally uh, pretty much uh, forget about it. That's uh, usually how it runs. So watch what the charts are doing. This chart actually comes from Charles Schwab. And uh, so uh, watch. that's why I'm a technician, folks. I don't trust the news and I never did. You know, I was just, uh, in fact, I, I think I told you uh, one of the most amazing things that happened to me when I was, really became a technician for sure, was back in 1973. Uh, I had, was long, uh, t uh, four contract. I think it was four contracts of eggs, and um, this is when old uh, Milo King used to run the egg market, but every Thursday they would give you the, what the government was going to buy because they bought 25% of all the eggs. And it said that the government was going to come in and buy just about everything that was available, except overnight they realized they had made an error and I'll be doggone, they weren't going to buy any. And so instead of eggs opening up the limit two days in a row, they opened down the limit two days in a row. But I had made the fatal mistake of spending that money before I'd cashed out, and I went to Beverly Hills, and I bought a leather jacket uh, for 600 bucks, which back in 73 was a lot of money. And it was a beautiful Western-style jacket, and it was, uh, it was really cool. I never wore it. I never took the price tags off of it. Uh, a few years later, I think about 77 or 78, I gave it to, uh, one of the charities for an auction, and uh, but I, I couldn't do it just because of that. And that I know I, I know I've told that story ten million times. That is now it is now ten million and one. And this is one of the problems with doing a radio show. I can't remember all the stories that I've told, but at least I tell them the right way, I guess. You know, so who knows? I will not tell that story anymore at all. Okay, that much I'm going to have to quit because I don't have any more stories. That's just about the end of it. Oh, wow. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, a couple of the things I wanted to mention to you. If I really would like to impress upon you folks the fact that you've got to follow what the charts are doing. Remember what happened in Hong Kong. The market rallied for six months and, and still has rallied. It rallied all the way from August uh, to the 78% re retracement level up there at 20, um, 28,000, 29,000. It rallied all that way in the midst of, you know, bombing and shattering the banks and a few people getting killed and stuff. That's a, you know, that's really a bad thing to to really have to to, to worry about. Okay, and I want to go back to the bonds for, for just a minute, folks, just to give you a, a little bit longer term view here. This is going back. Uh, this is just. This is. I just want to show you the high that we had. It's been. It's been three years ago that we made this high in the bond market to get this up here, and we'll be able to see. There's where we are. You made the big ABCD up there at the 177 level, and then we've had this big correction. And what we're doing now is we're possibly looking. And the key word here is possibly looking at a 61% retracement in the bonds. Now, if they get above that 6226 level then that's that's bearish i mean that's bullish i mean then you're wrong you know that there's something wrong so that's what the patterns try to do is they try to tell you you know what you're looking at as far as uh you know what type of a uh, thing that you want to be watching as far as uh, what support or resistance. That's the, the whole key to look at it. Now, here is a uh, situation that we have going right now as we're speaking. I want to get this up here to uh, take a look at it. But this happens to be the old British pound going across the pond. Uh, you'll notice here from January 24th, you know, to where we are right now, those five days, we've made these big corrections to the downside. We're now down at this 130 level, which is the 78% retracement. So it must hold the uh, 130 level because if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, 
then you're looking at something that's going to be uh, pretty nasty uh, to the downside. But uh, still to that effect, it has not. Now, one of the questions that uh, people have asked is about the commodity markets. Folks, these markets were heading down long before this, uh, this epidemic of the coronavirus happened. They Right after the trade package was signed, these markets did not hold support. We talked about that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so many times it's just a uh, so repetition is the mother of knowledge, and we certainly uh, did that. One of the ones that uh, was really looking, uh, uh, you know, rather uh, tough was the bean market, and then I'll bring this up and let you take a look at it, but you take a look at hogs. Hogs were limit down yesterday, and I don't know, they'll probably be lower today. I don't know whether they will or not, but cattle's got hit hard, too. All of the commodities are hit hard because, A, they don't have any, they're not taking, they're not taking shipments, for, from what I understand. So eventually, these markets will bounce back but you have to wait to look at it on a, on a, a pattern basis to see what's going on. You know, that's basically uh, where you want to look at. So we'll take uh, when, when it's going to happen. I don't know. All I know is it's going to be a big deal uh, either yes or no, whether it's, uh, you know, going to be uh, fake news or not. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just announced a special 90-minute live webinar taking place this month for subscribers to his Fibonacci 24-7 trading service. On January 29th from 4 till 5.30 p.m., Larry will be covering how to read supply and demand and how, in combination with his trademark ABCD patterns, you can control risk and maximize profit in today's algo-dominated markets. In this live 90-minute webinar, Larry will cover a hidden in plain sight trend change pattern that gives you early entry into the trend, how to find and update the key harmonic numbers to trade against in futures, forex, and stocks, how to translate three go-to patterns into supply and demand, and how to use them for entries, the continued importance of the opening price in 2020, and how to use the time of day when taking a position and for entry into longer trends. Sign up now by clicking on the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com and select Fibonacci 24-7. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, uh, I want to uh, run through a few commodities here because these markets had, you know, before these uh, diseases that we're seeing out here now uh, had already made some type of a top up in here. You notice that the copper market went out to the 288 level. Mr. Z was uh, heavily short up in that area, and now we're way down about 20 cents a pound down to a much, much lower level. And we've gone through this 78% level the last day or so, so that's telling you that copper hasn't found a bottom as yet. It probably will one of these days, but so far it hasn't as of yet. Uh, remember, folks, we still have a big gap in the S&P 500. It's about 30 points higher from what happened Friday night. So you really uh, you have to you know give it uh, a little bit of time to see uh, what's going on. Now, here's one that uh, we're really watching very, very closely, and that is the natural gas. I think we're getting pretty close in this level right here, and we'll be able to see what is going on, uh, what's going on right here. It's uh, made a 1.27 expansion. We're trading at about 191 this morning, so it's held, but it still hasn't given us a small term, a small turn pattern to really to see whether uh, it's going to uh, move or not. Another one that was very good to us last week was the uh, wheat market. And here again, you'll be able to see that uh, we had a really nice pattern up there, multiple ABCD patterns occurring at the 591, and we've got down, we've dropped 30 cents a, uh, a bushel now down to the uh, 560 level, where we should find some support in here in corn and beans just on a technical basis. The problem is, is where are they going to ship them from? And, you know, that's the that's the problem. It's just shutting down a lot of things. Uh, uh, you know, when you shut down the airports and you shut down the train station, that pretty much shuts down the economy. So if they don't get this thing straight straightened up, it's going to look a lot worse than, than maybe it is. But as I say, I, I don't believe two-thirds, because you hear one side and then you hear the other. You know, it's just uh, it's just truly amazing to see, you know, to see what's uh, what's going on over there. But just look at the charts. They will not steer you the wrong way, because if there's more buying, you know, people are going to be in there. Now, here's, a, here's one that's really interesting. This is the uh, long-term... Uh, chart of sugar. Uh, we've been, uh, we looked where we were in September, Ruby and Mr. Z and everybody else in the room was looking at the three drive to a bottom pattern that we had there at 1080. We rallied all the way up to 1480. Uh, that's a little over $4,400 in uh, four and a half months. And now we're in an area where we should start to con to contract, but uh, sugar is actually the only commodity that is holding its own up in this area. So um, that's another thing to watch. These Some of these smaller things like coffee and sugar have limited supply areas, so it's a lot easier uh, to look at. Another one that made a beautiful ABCD pattern that uh, that you want to take a look at, a very major commodity, which is soybean oil. Uh, we went right up to 35, as you can see, uh, at the very top up there at 3550. That was the 1.618 expansion of the high from February down to the low in May. Uh, that's why those numbers are so important. You can see the ABCD pattern that was there. We had a double top right in the middle of that move. It backed off to a 382 retracement, then went up to an ABCD pattern. So those are the kind that you like to uh, like to see. And uh, we'll, we have a, probably a great buying opportunity here in soybean oil. Soybean oil, folks, is cooking oil. It's also paint, the paint for for, uh, for automobiles and stuff. And I would tell the story about Henry Ford, but someone would start ragging on me that I told the story too many times. <laughs> but I'm going to tell it again. The reason why we have colored cars, folks, is because Henry Ford got tired of painting them all black. So he needed something other than lacquer to make his cars black. So he found out the soybean was the best oil to use. And so he mixed his oil uh, with his colorful cars, and then we started to uh, uh, get different colored cars back in the, um, the, uh, the late 40s. So that's pretty much soybean is actually a Chinese plant. It was imported here many, many years ago. I can remember as a kid, uh, the farm across the street, the farmer would plant corn one year, and the next year he would plow it over and plant beans, and that would be for nutrition for the soil. Uh, but that's the way it did it back in those days. I can also remember going to the supermarket to buying margarine, and we had to mix the margarine. The margarine was white, and you had to put the yellow dye into it to make it look like butter, because the Wisconsin lobbying, the Wisconsin cheese and dairy folks, had a, had a nice uh, person in Washington that made a law that you couldn't sell that stuff as a colored yellow. Well, 
well, that changed after a while. After you pay a few people off, that's where you're. That's what you're looking at here. So, anyway, that's what we're paying attention to here this morning, and we're going to find out, you know, what's going on uh, from these levels. We'll have to uh, be wait and see. Be really watch the British pound very, 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 very closely now, folks. We're right down here, just a tad below that 29.90 level. Very, very important. You've got to be. Uh, you got to be ready for that one because that's going to be a real interesting one to uh, to pay attention to. It's uh, very very interesting. Fact is, I should. Uh, in fact, I'm going to. Let's just get this get this up here so that we can all take a look at it, and uh, we'll get that British pound up here. Here we are. Ah, uh, there we are. Here, let's get it right up here so we can take a peek with no sneak. Here we go. I made that up. All right, you can see here we're down. We've taken out those lows. We're sitting right there on that. The words that say key support. Uh, that's what it is. It's key support. So pay close attention to it. It's right there right now. If you buy it, you don't have to. Uh, you know, you won't have to risk very much because 30 pips, you're roughly 160 bucks. 180 bucks, you know, you wouldn't have to risk if, if it goes below that, you're wrong. So that's really what you're looking at. Gold has been acting absolutely perfectly, Maria. You get the videos and take a look at it. I mean, we had a beautiful price objective down there at, uh, you know, 1571. Uh, and it went to 1570. I don't know if it's, I uh, haven't been able to check it this morning. Let me check quickly, check because. Uh, uh, we're still moving up. We went to 1571, and we got up here to 1575. So we'll see if that uh, see if that means anything or not. So that's uh, that's what the that's what it looks like anyway. So we'll we'll keep an eye on some of these things as we walk through uh, looking at these uh, charts uh, today. Now I wanted to cover a couple other of these uh, commodities because I think they're. They're pretty important. I wanted to get the uh, crude oil up here too because we've had a, uh, you know, big break in crude. We're down to, to some key support here. We'll get this up here. We went below it uh, by just a little bit because uh, the uh, that 786 broke. We said that the ABCD structure on this uh, literally would take you down to about uh, 50. 5160. We got to 5220, I believe, and now we've had a little bit of a rally of a buck. And all, none of these things have rallied above that gap area, so that's the that's the whole key, folks. What you? Someone's asked a question about this disease. I have no, I don't know anything about. It. All I know is reaction to these things, folks. I mean, you could come in like today. They say, oh, gee, this looks really great, and then. 24 hours from now, this thing could be infecting Washington D. Uh, wouldn't be that lucky, but it it would then be infecting Washington D.C. and all hell could break loose. You just don't know, and then you don't even know if the news is right or not. So we're we're living this is an old Chinese curse, by the way. May you live in interesting times, and that's exactly what we're living through right now. SARS was a whole lot different. You know, it was a little bit more. Uh, it was cert certainly as dangerous, but not nearly as as widespread as this. Look how quickly this thing is spread. You know, I I was in well, I was in Guangzhou when it happened. I didn't know anything was going on. So, all I know is just be be really careful. You've got to protect yourself because these things are a little crazy, and they stay crazy. <laughs> eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart of the NASDAQ that we discussed on Friday. That's where we had that uh, double ABCD patterns up there at the uh, 1.618 expansion at 92.75. And the fact that where we were, I sent a video out on this uh, middle of the afternoon on Friday, uh, right before the close, saying, you know, if, if we were to gap down next week, it would be uh, very, very bearish. And, of course, we did gap down, and we went all the way down to, I believe, 90 89 and change, 89.40, 89.60. So we took out the lows of January 15th. And so far, all we've been able to do is to rally about 150 points up to around the, I think we got to 90.60 last night, and we're trading at around 90, 20, or 30, something like that right now. I'm not even sure. But uh, there's with Apple coming out with the earnings, you know, they get very, very emotional with Apple, as you know, the biggest stock, the most expensive stock in the world. Everybody has it. Everybody's bullish. There's no one that's bearish Apple, and no one should be, because they've got more money than God. They get all kinds of free advertising, and nothing ever goes wrong. But if it does gap up uh, quite a bit, we could begin to fill this gap at around 91.20. There's always that possibility to see if you're going to uh, to see that occur, because uh, – as we said, uh, this is just a pattern. That's what we're watching. Uh, here's one that uh, we've been following that has uh, been sort of bearish. Uh, this is the one that we're watching here. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, that we got to uh, the double ABCD patterns up there at the 1.27 there at uh, at. 1,046. Uh, we're now trading uh, below that, and we're trading in right around 9,800, $980 an ounce. If we get below 980, folks, uh, that's going to set up a very negative situation uh, in the platinum because it could literally, uh, you know, re really break a, a whole lot more uh, from that level. Uh, oh, Al's just told me that there is one line still free. All the others are busy. 877-927-666. If you'd like to chime in and talk about what's going on, here's another one that's setting at the moment of truth, folks. Let's get this up here so we can take a look at it. This is the uh, euro, and you'll notice here that the euro is down here to this trading it uh, right at the one at 110 level, folks. Below 110, below 110 in the euro is going to send that U.S. dollar index. Uh, 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 heading towards heading up north towards Alaska, folks, because if uh, the, the index starts to move, you'll be able to see here that the bullish pattern that we have here on this dollar index could easily, you know, take it up uh, quite a bit because we've, we've reached that level up here at 98 and change now. So this is a, uh, a moment of truth in both the euro and the dollar index and the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, 
uh, British pounds. So all of those are lining up. If you remember uh, a few weeks back, uh, we were talking about the Australian dollar in the midst of all those fires they were having there. And as you can see, we had that big ABCD pattern there on January the 6th, just about three weeks ago. And now we're down completing the D pattern uh, as we speak today. So that's completing that. So that's going to be anything below uh, 67 here means that U.S. dollar could just start rocking and rolling from Canada to Australia to, to Hong Kong, wherever, because it's going to look really, really bullish. Whether that pulls gold up, or not, I don't know. All we do know is the fact that that 1585 level in the gold is uh, is uh, you know relatively important. And if we get above that, then we we have to look at it. But the most important part of the gold is the 1611. That was the uh, the number that we hit back a couple of weeks ago, and that was the 61 percent on the weekly. That told us that gold had a possibility of uh, correcting correcting to the downside to see. If that's it. Uh, regarding the uh, the broad market, I wanted to bring this to your attention. This is from our good friend Jim Bartolioni of V50 Partners. Uh, he does a lot of work. He's very good in mathematics. He took the low from way back uh, in 1972. Uh, you see the ABCD structure 1.618 uh, up in this area. And of course, we did get a break, you know, from that level. And uh, whether that break holds or not, we don't know. But those are just some of the longer term ones, you know, that we're uh, sorting to, to take a look at. That's uh, the main thing. Also, the other one that did not make a new high here was the Russell Index. As you'll notice here on the Russell Index that we sold off uh, quite a bit uh, from that level. So we'll, we'll determine later on whether it's going to keep making new highs or not. But we did gap down and uh, we've broken at least a little bit. Maybe not enough, but we did break down some. And, of course, with the news the way it is, if they come out and find out that this uh, epidemic is really under control right away, you could get the stocks up 1,000 points in one day in the Dow Jones. It would be so uh, – people would be so ecstatic about that. Now, there is one really interesting pattern that we want to show you, and this is the, uh, the pattern for the Bitcoin. This is sent to us by our friends across the pond. You notice that we had that beautiful Gartley pattern. You can see all the little uh, black squares down there. That was a 1.27. That also happened to be a 61% retracement of the previous low. And on a long-term log chart, that was a 38% retracement when Bitcoin was trading for 100 bucks. Now we're trading uh, close to that 9,200 level again. And, of course, uh, 19,000 and change was the high in January two years ago. So that's still, you know, fighting the uh, long-term uh, things, uh, what we're looking at here. Hold on a second, folks. The uh, the uh, the uh, something is beeping. Oh, it's Apple. Apple just made the 382. How be about that? that I, I put that in just for the heck of it, just to see if uh, see if Apple was going to gap up. I expected it to gap up a whole lot more. Just just I got to turn this off, folks. Or it'll drive me nuts, which is a very short drive, but I don't want to listen to it. So bear with me here, and I will get this up here. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll just post it since we're since we're here right now. And uh, we'll take a look at it where we are. Hold on just a minute here. Oh, dear. All right. Just a second here. Get this up here and post it. And let's see where we are. All right. That was the number I was looking at right around uh, uh, 314. That was the number I wanted to see. Of course, they're expecting really bullish numbers in the Apple. So I would expect that would probably, you know, be the case. So we'll wait and see, you know, what it really happens uh, from that level. The bonds are still down a full point. Uh, from their high that it made last night at 62.27, we're now at 61.27, so that's a very interesting one uh, to uh, keep a very close eye on. Also, uh, if we get below um, uh, the key price still in the euro, excuse me, in the ES, folks, is still uh, 32.10. I know we're at 32.55, but the way these markets are going, it could be at 33.55 or 31.55 very, very quickly. But below 32.10 is going to set in motion some really, really serious selling. And that's because these options 
persons or buyers and stuff, that's one standard deviation from the mean. And if you go past one standard deviation from the mean, they have to come in and start covering their positions. And that's when it gets really crazy. So uh, sort of watch that. That's going to be a very interesting one, you know, to uh, to pay attention to, at least uh, the way it looks like uh, here this morning. Uh, and of course, we're just opening. We're in the first 20 minutes. Not really much is happening. They're jockeying for position. And we're still up quite, quite a bit. So the shorts are uh, knowingly and, and assuredly uh, scared to death as they should be. But the euro is now breaking below that critical 110 level, folks. That is bullish to the U.S. dollar, bearish to the euro. Uh, there's no other way you can look at that. It's, it's breaking key support in every stretch of the imagination. So uh, you don't want to, well, it might turn on a dime here, but uh, it's breaking some, the dollar, U.S. dollar is strong. Now, you make your decision what you want to see, but uh, that's uh, that's what we're paying attention to here here this morning. So that's what we're watching. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've been asked to what I thought was the most important chart that I posted on all these charts that I posted here. It has to be the NASDAQ chart because of the double ABCDs at the 1.618 dive to a top, the big gap down, and now we're in the process of seeing whether we're going to fill this gap. And a lot of it will be predicated on what happens with Apple. We gapped up about 5 or $6 in Apple, and um, 
So that's always an inst institutional favorite. But the earnings coming out, they're looking at it. The problem is they did mention today that uh, if this thing in China gets worse, the supply problems for the iPhone really, really accentuate. And that could be the black swan event for Apple if they can't get their products out. And with them shutting down McDonald's and the uh, uh, the Starbucks and the schools and everything else and locking down cities. This is not a good situation for commerce. So uh, we have to pay attention to that and watch the prices to see what's happening because you'll know when these things loosen up because the markets will start, you know, rallying quite a bit. And maybe that's what's already happened. Remember what happened in Hong Kong, folks. We had all that rally or all those protests from August through January, six months, and the market went all the way up to the 78% level uh, right in the middle of that. So markets follow the news, and they don't always interpret the news the way we think that they are, but that's uh, what we're watching very, very closely. Uh, another market that I think that is super important is this euro, because we've just broken down below that 110 level. It might be a trap down in here, but right now it appears that euro could be looking at something really, really serious. Folks, we just broke a, a 618 and a 786 in the euro down there. That's not a good sign. So my assumption is that that tells us that we're probably getting ready to, uh, you know, go down a, a little bit more. But we'll do one thing at a time and see if that uh, see what happens. Now we did just backed up above uh, 110 again, so uh, there was not many stops there. That could be a that could be a good thing, and we're sitting right there on the British pound. So this is the uh, proverbial moment of truth in all these things because that's where we're going to decide whether we we move uh, one way or another from this level. Uh, someone's asked a question about crude. Folks, there's a lot of resistance in crude where the gap is at 53.90. We're trading at 53.06 right now. And if we do get up to 53.90, I would certainly take that opportunity to go short. So we'll see. 877-927-6648.